better at presenting stuff. So um, just fill that out and feel free to be harsh. I'm a thick skin. Um, and at first I want to thank everybody for coming out. I'm Jamie, if you haven't met me, uh, and I work in the learning lab. Um, so thanks for coming out. I know you're all super busy. And I hope this uh, presentation is informative. Um, I want to treat more like a uh, class than a presentation, partly because I think people learn better that way, and uh, partly because it'll make me less nervous. So feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, I welcome them. So um, this is Intro to Regular Expressions. Today I'll be going through the definition of a regular expression, uh, kind of a loose definition. Um, talk about kind of the bad uh, aura that regular expressions have. By the way, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yeah? Um, I'll also talk about uh, things that might whet your desire to use regular expressions, the features and possible uses. Um, next I'll talk about literacy how to read and write regular expressions, and why you should be able to do so. And then we have a little bit of potpourri, just random odds and ends to finish up with. So this is a simple regular expression. Not the simplest, uh, but basically what it does is match Wharton email addresses. What does that mean? Um, let's see. What is a regular expression? I'm not going to go through, through the formal definition. You can probably look that up on Wikipedia. Uh, basically, I think it's best to think of them like um, pattern matchers or text processors or uh, mini specifications. For example, that previous regular expression is a specification for all valid words and email addresses, basically. So how, how are they processed? Well. We feed a regular string into one end of the regular expression, and out comes various output. Well, that can be a, a Boolean, perhaps. It can be a, a set of matches, or it can be a transformed string. So there's our possible outputs. Um, what is this, this heart thing? Well, it's, uh, you can think of it as sort of a machine. One method that people use to create these machines and software are finite state automata. So um, they're basically like flowcharts. Um, this is a, a visualizer uh, for regular expressions that will produce the corresponding finite state automata. So let's say we have a regular expression A. What that does is says if the string has an A, then it's good. So uh, we have this little graph here that shows that when you input an A, it accepts an A. So uh, let me clear this. If I just input an A, the, uh, the bubble, the little bubble moves from the start to the accepting state, which has a double circle. And um, so I won't show any more of that, but you'll see, you'll see these later. So, why do regular expressions have a bad reputation? There's this famous quote by Jamie Zawinski, who worked on, I think it was Emacs, and someone suggested integrating Perl into Emacs uh, for its regular expression functionality. And uh, Jamie was having none of this. He said, uh, some people, when confronted with a problem, think, I know, I'll use a regular expression. Now they have two problems. He felt that regular expressions were overused and um, people just, you know, just used them for the problem domains that they weren't designed for. So that goes into part of why it has a bad rap. They're overused, well, people think they're overused and perhaps that's true, and they could be unintelligible. Um, when you see a long regular expression, it can be very confusing looking at it. I'll try to dispel some of these myths. Um, first, talking about the overused aspect, I'll talk about good uses and bad uses. And um, concerning the unintelligible part, 
I'll try, that, that feeds into the whole literacy um, section. But first, just to scare you a little bit, um, if you haven't seen any of these, these are kind of cool. Um, these are really obscure regular expressions, um, probably what people think of if they have a really bad opinion of regular expressions. This first one is used to validate the entire email specification. Um, the email spec is actually really large. You can embed comments in emails and stuff like that. So this is a really large regular expression to, uh, to, to validate them. Next, this is a regular expression that solves a Sudoku. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, that's this little puzzle at the bottom right. Uh, what it'll do is it'll match um, an a inputted puzzle and it'll capture all the correct answers um, as a result. So this, this may crash my computer. Hold on. Yeah, it's working really hard. In JavaScript? Uh, no, it's, I think it's an image. Okay. So it, this is, I don't know if you can even see that from back there, but this is a, a, a huge regular expression, uh, computer generated, um, to solve a Sudoku puzzle. So I'll close that before my browser crashes. Okay. So before I go on to the next section, um, are there any questions? No, everyone's good. Okay, um, as I mentioned in this section, I'm going to talk about uh, things that might whet your desire to use regular expressions. First, I'm going to talk about the features of regular expressions, just the very basic ones, because after all, this is an intro. So first off, in uh, using regular expressions, you can uh, specify literal. And literals just match the characters themselves. So, for example, if I wanted to validate a string, I wanted to say uh, a string doesn't have ABC, I literally just write ABC, and you know that we could use that to match the string. That's probably one of the simplest uh, regular expressions. Um, and here's the, below. This is the representation of that regular expression in a finite state machine. So. Um, you know, I probably won't go over these again, but you can check them out later because I'm going to send out the slide link if you're interested. So, um, regular expressions have kind of like a Boolean or sort of mapping uh, with brackets. Uh, these are called character classes or character sets. So let's say we want to match Bark or Basque. Well, we can type or we can write BA and use the brackets to specify the possible options. Notice that the R and the S are in, within the character class. That means we can take either. So uh, when we're going and matching the string, we look for a B, then an A, then an R and an S, or a K. And that will match Bark or Basque. Character classes also support negations. We can say we don't want any of these options. So we can use this regular expression uh, up here, right here, if we want to match everything except crap. Um, there are also shorthands for certain commonly used classes. 